Hi, I'm Dr. Stan Kucher, and I'm here to talk about a very trending topic of great interest to many people. That is exercise and mental health. What's the relationship? Is there a relationship? If so, how can we use this to our benefit? Well, the first thing that we need to say is that what is good for your bicep is good for your brain and vice versa. So I'm actually getting tired of people talking about mental health promotion as if it was something unique and health promotion as if it was something unique. It's time we put the two of them together because if you're exercising and you're eating right and you're having lots of good friends and you're taking good care of your health, you are taking good care of your physical health and your mental health. At the same time, your brain actually is attached to your body and your body is attached to your brain and they do work together all the time through the nervous system, through the blood flow, through the endocrine system, through the immune system, etc., etc., etc. So let's get over separating the two. And exercise is a wonderful example of that. And there really are three types of exercise that can be helpful to us. That can be helpful to our brains, as well as helping the other parts of our body. The first, and this is the one we all hear about, is the type of exercise that actually helps brain cells repair themselves. That is, it increases the levels of neurohormones that actually improve the ability of brain cells to grow and develop. Now, this kind of exercise is tough. This is not sort of reaching for another Coca-Cola kind of exercise. This is 40 to 45 minutes of sustained at 80% of cardiac output four to five times a week exercise. It's this level of exercise that we're finding out really can enhance brain growth and development. It may even delay the onset of some brain diseases like Alzheimer's. We're not quite sure. But it also may help people who have depression and anxiety by helping the way their brains grow and regenerate. So that's good. So frankly, if it can help all those things, why aren't all of us doing it? Me included. The second type of exercise is the everyday activity, which is good activity, it gets you going, but it's low impact exercise. And, and we're not getting our heart rate anywhere near 80% maximum cardiovascular output. We're, we're walking briskly. And that kind of exercise needs to be sustained for 20 to 30 minutes. And you can't add them up. You can't say, well, I'm going to walk for five minutes, and then two hours later I'm going to walk for another five minutes, and it's going to be 10 minutes. Uh-uh, that's not how it works. It's sustained exercise. And we find from data there that sustained exercise helps all sorts of things. It helps us feel better about ourselves. It may help us regulate our everyday emotional health. If we're feeling stressed a little bit, we go for a walk helps. Preferably, we go for a walk in a park. It helps even more. That's good for you. The more you do that, the better it is. So a couple of times a day, not a bad idea. So why don't most of us do that, including me? And then the third type of exercise, and the data here is now a little confusing, but it shows that movement during the day just little bits and bits of movement. So having a standing desk, walking around in your office, going up and down the stairs instead of taking the elevator. You know, I've got to tell you, how many times have I seen people getting on an elevator, going one or two floors up or one or two floors down? Come on, take the stairs. This is not about burning calories. This is about engaging your brain and your body into doing something useful. So those are the three types of exercise. The intense cardiovascular aerobic, 40 to 45 minutes, four or five times a week, really good for brain growth and development. The sustained exercise for about 20 minutes at a time, like a brisk walk every day, really good exercise. And the everyday moving around, standing at your desk, moving around your office, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, that kind of stuff parking your car and walking for seven minutes to work. Good stuff. You know what? We all can do it, unless we have a disability, in which case we can do different kinds of exercise. 
we need to do it. It's not difficult, it's not expensive. So of course the big question is, why aren't we doing it? Thanks, I'm Dr. Stan Kucher. <laughs>